GreenForceTactical.com. We're here at the Knife Kits DIY Lab, and today we're going to show you how to make the most simple form of knife sheath, which is a fold-over or taco-style knife sheath. In order to accomplish that, we're going to use several hand tools. We're going to use a knife for scoring our kydex. We're going to use a ruler to figure out where to score the kydex. We're going to use a quarter-inch drill bit and a standard hand drill, and some specialty tools that I'll go through, like a flaring die for flaring out the eyelets, and a forming, die, a forming press, which will actually give us the form of the item. So this is what we're going to be making. Let's begin. So the first step in making a taco sheath for your item is to determine how much material you're going to use. And I'm going to show you how to determine how much material you're going to use by placing the item on the material. And because we're making a taco, we can just roll it over. And we'll make a mark that's well wide of the item. And then we will determine what that measurement is with a ruler. And it looks like that measurement's going to be right at six inches. Now, the Kydex has two sides. It has a textured side and a smooth side. And generally speaking, we want the textured side to the outside. I mean, you can do it however you want. Some people like to shine it to the outside. Me, I prefer the textured side. And we prefer to mark on the textured side because we don't want to turn it upside down and grind the material into any part of our bench and mar up the surface that we're going to use. So now that we've got it marked, we're going to take our straight edge, place it across the marks, and I like to use three drags. The first drag I use is just going to determine, it's going to establish a pathway for the blade. So we're going to lightly drag it down the first time, and that's going to give the blade a place to run. The second one, I apply a little bit more pressure, and then the third one, I apply even greater pressure. And what that does, it gives us a nice score into the material. And then you can place it on the edge, push on the material, and it'll score and break just like that. So you just finish it by bringing it back. And now you have the piece that you're going to use for constructing your taco style sheath. So now that we've got our material cut, I can show you that there's ample room above and below the item. This is where our eyelets will be. So now that we've got this piece cut, the next step is going to be heating. So let's go heat some Kydex. OK, now we're ready to heat some Kydex. Remember, we, always, we have the textured side and we have the shiny side. And we want to put the textured side up so that we don't put any marks on the part that we're going to be able to see with the oven. OK, so what we're going to do is we're going to take the Kydex, textured side up, place it in the center of the oven with the rack set in the middle, shut the oven. Set it for about 300 degrees and put it on heat. Now, now is an excellent time to talk about safety. When we take that Kydex out of there, it's going to be between 305 and 325 degrees. People bend and form at different temperatures. I like to run right in the middle, about 310 to 315 degrees. Another thing we need to be aware of is when you're, when you're going to fold around a knife, one of the things you want to make sure you do is you want to put a little bit of tape on the edge where the sharp edge is. You don't want that sharp edge being able to get in there while that kydex is soft and do anything untoward like put a, a hard line or put a nick on the inside of the kydex when you're forming it. So what I like to do is just take a piece of tape, it doesn't have to be terribly fancy, fold it over the line, and tear it off. That's basically what you're going to want to end up with, OK? Just a tape over the edge, and that'll protect the kydex from the knife and give us just a little bit of extra clearance on the sharp surface there, OK? So let's go over here and take us a quick look, see what our temperatures look like. Now, if you're looking at the kydex in the oven, you'll get some visual clues, and you'll also get some aromatic cues. Some people can't smell it, some people can. But you get two smells. The first smell you get is just the smell of warm plastic. The second smell, and a distinct smell you'll get, will be when the edges curl up in there. And you'll be able to tell things are fixing to happen. So I'm going to go ahead and put my gloves on for safety. And I'm going to stand here and watch this oven and see how we're doing. All right. So we're almost halfway there. Another thing to be aware of if you're using a toaster oven, uh, this is obviously very basic. We're, we're showing you the basic steps of how to get into forming Kydex. 
Um, if you're using a toaster oven, be sure and use one that you're not using for cooking. Go ahead and go to the dollar store, Walmart, or your local grocery store and buy a separate toaster oven for using for this. They're under 40 bucks, and you don't want your pizza rolls to taste like plastic down the road. So just get you a separate one. Don't do it in your wife's oven. She's not going to be real happy with you. So let's take us a quick look. Again, you can't shine the non-contact thermometer through the glass because it's going to read the temperature of the glass. You want to go ahead and open it up and give it a direct read. And you don't want to read one place. You want to go ahead and go all the way around it. And one of the things I like to do is I like to turn the Kydex in the oven when I'm about halfway through. And you can smell that first smell. That's telling us that the Kydex is starting to warm up and starting to relax. And it's almost ready for what we want to do with it. So I'm going to give it about another 30 seconds. I'm going to take another reading. And I have faith that we'll be in a position where we can go ahead and form. Now, it's important to note that when we go from heating to forming, we want to do that without wasting a lot of time. Because once it comes out of there, it starts cooling off. And as it cools off, we lose the flexibility that we're looking for for forming. So let's take a quick look and see where we are. We're going to need just a little bit more. We're almost there. We're right there. So again, if you're doing this at home, another thing is you want to isolate your, your toaster oven. You don't want a bunch of stuff piled up around it while you're working. You want it out in the free air so it's nice and safe. And let's see where we are. Okay holding 312 across the whole thing. We'll take it out, place it in the press, place our item on top of it, fold the Kydex over, get it nice and flat. Now we're going to close the press, pull it down, and get the latch. And there we go. So I'm going to turn my oven off. Bing! And we're going to let this sit for 15 minutes. It'll take about 15 minutes for the Kydex to come back to ambient temperature. And we want it to be below about 160 degrees before we remove it from the press. And that ensures that all of the molding we've done stays molded the way we want it to, and we don't lose any of our definition. So we'll let this sit for about 15 minutes, and we'll be right back. And we're back. It's been about 15 minutes. We're going to go ahead and open up the press and see what we've got. Push down on it, pull the latch out of the way, lean the top panel up. Oh, yes. It came out very nice. So if you look at the, what you're looking for is you want to be able to see the definition on the top of the knife and around the blade, and you want to be able to see all the features of the knife through the plastic. So let's go ahead and look at the other side. Yes, the other side is also very nice. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to drill in a line of eyelets along the top here and get that secured and then we'll trim it up. So the next thing we're going to do is drilling and uh, we'll go ahead and show you what that looks like. Okay, on the taco knife sheath, the next thing we're going to want to do is do the layout for the eyelets along the top edge and go ahead and drill those eyelet holes and I'll show you how that goes. So the first thing we need to determine is the top edge where we're going to end the, holes, the scabbard. And then we're going to determine the basic location of the first hole. We want it to be somewhere in that area right there. So now we'll just take our drill guide. And this just allows you can do this by hand if you want, but I prefer to do it with a straight line guide. And it just makes, uh, makes my life a little bit easier. Kind of a shortcut. So we'll go ahead and drill the first hole. We'll go ahead and drill the end hole. Okay, and now we'll go ahead and drill the intermediate holes. I'm gonna step back to this hole and make sure it's still aligned. When you're drilling, you want to make sure the drill goes straight through. You don't want to get, drill it at some weird angle because that'll cause your eyelets to bind later on down the road. Okay. 
Let me take the drill guide off and show you what we've got here. Okay, so you always have a little bit of schmutz. Go ahead and pop that off with your fingernails. Okay, so that's what we ended up with. We ended up with a line of violets and a straight line. And in all likelihood, when we go ahead and cut this, we'll cut this piece off right here and we'll end off somewhere about here. But if we need better to have it and not need it than to need to not have it. So that's what we're going to do these days, boys. We're going to go over there and uh, we're going to go ahead and go over there and eyelet these things. So follow me. Okay, so here we are over at the uh, flaring press, and this is one of the Master Series flaring presses. So what we're going to do is we're going to decide that this is going to be the front side of the sheath. So we're going to push the eyelets through from the front with the pre-rolled side to the front. Now very simply, you just press the eyelets through the holes with your thumb. It's not going to take much pressure at all. If you meet any resistance, stop. It means you've got some drilling, flashing, or something between the layers. So this is what you're looking for. This is the pre-rolled side on the front, and this is the side to be rolled on the back. So when we go over to the flaring press, we want to make sure that we put the pre-flared side down into the die and make sure that it centers up and it's right where it needs to be. You know, it's, it's, it's all in there. And then we'll just take very gently and bring the top die down. And you can kind of move it around and make sure that everything's all in alignment. And then in order to flare it, all you do is lightly press down on the handle. And that's it. Don't go gorilla crazy with it. Just ease down on it, okay? And that will yield you a flared eyelet that looks something like this. No cracks, concentric and smooth, and that's what you're looking for. You want it to look like that on that side and that on that side. So that's a perfectly flared eyelet. I'm going to go ahead and flare the rest of these and show you what that looks like. Now, when you're putting the eyelet die down, I always like to just put it on there and you can see the handles moving. I'm wiggling around with my hand. That's letting everything line itself up to where it needs to be. And that's how you avoid messing up your dies or cracking an eyelet. Let me just go ahead and set it on the bottom there. Get it where it needs to be. Pull this down and then just don't even pull on the handle. Just move things around and get everything aligned until everything's kind of relaxed. And then just push down on the eyelet press. Boom. Easy as that. I see a lot of people struggle with this. I have a lot of friends that call me up and tell me they're having problems doing eyelets. And uh, just tell them not to, not to try so hard and just let everything relax. And as long as, like anything else, if you force it, it's going to be messed up. If you have to force it, there's something wrong. So make sure everything's nice and loosey-goosey. And squeeze. So. That's what a properly flared set of eyelets looks like. They're fully flared, the pieces are pressed together, and there's no cracks. So that's exactly what we're looking for. So now that we're done with this, the next step is going to be cutting. So I'll meet you over there at the saw. Okay, here we have the taco knife sheath, and we're over here at the saw, so we're going to go ahead and start establishing the, uh, establishing the final shape with the saw, and then we'll finish it up on the sander. So take a look. Hi, we're about halfway through the video, so I want to take a moment. If this seems like it's a little too much for you, or you just don't have the space, we'll be happy to build you a blaster scabbard, or a knife sheath, or whatever you'd like. Just hit us up on our website at greenforcetactical.com. Please follow us on Instagram, on Twitter, and on YouTube at Green Force Tactical. Again, we appreciate you watching, and enjoy the rest of the video. Thank you. And again, we're not trying to get to the final shape. We're just trying to take away the majority of the material so we don't have to spend forever sanding.
So there we are close to the final shape. This is what we are close to the final shape and we'll go ahead and finish dressing this up and rounding these points and finishing up this area over there on the sander. Okay, so here we are with the taco knife sheath and we're going to step over here to the sander and go ahead and put the finished shape on it and we'll come back and show you what that looks like, okay? Okay, there's your basic taco style knife sheath. It uh, fits the knife, knife has great retention, and you still have a push off where you can push off with your thumb to get the knife in and out of the holster without ripping it out. And I'm really happy with that. Now if you wanna learn how to do the polishing and all of the mirror stuff that we do, um, tune in for the advanced video that's coming. Um, we'll go ahead and show you how to do all that. But remember, this is Chris from Greenforce, and we really appreciate you showing up and watching our videos, and we'll see you next time.